My name's Mike and I'm going to go through how to make indices or powers really, really easy. Let's begin with something quite easy. 7 times 7. Now, I'm not interested in that 7 times 7 is 49, although it is. What we're going to look at is how else we can write 7 times 7. 7 times 7 can be written as 7 squared, or 7 to the power of 2. If we have 7 times 7 times 7, that could be written as 7 to the power of 3. Okay? So these little numbers at the top here, these numbers are called powers or indices. Okay? That's if you have many of them. If there's just one, it's called an index. Okay? And it works with anything. If we've got 8 times 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, which is going to be a really big number, we can write that as 8 to a power. And what power would it be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 8 to the power 5. And it works with any number. We can have 13 times 13 times 13 times 13. And that would just be 13 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's how we can make it simple. So that's how to get from something like this to a power really easily. Now the same can be done the other way around. If we've got 9 to the power 6, of course that's just 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 times 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's how we can expand 9 to the power of 6. If you've got something like 3 to the power of 10, and you actually want to work it out, but without a calculator, it's often easier to write it out like this. 3 times 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 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then work it out. And with multiplication, we can do the numbers in any order. So 3 times 3 gives me 9. 3 times 3 gives me 9. 9 times 9 gives me 81, and I'm going to draw a dotted line down here. 81 times a 3 that we haven't used yet gives us 243. Now that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3 to the power 5 gives us 243. Over here, we've got 3 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 to the power 5, that's also going to be 243. Multiply those two together, and you get an answer of 59,049. So 3 to the power 10 would give you that. And you can do all of that without a calculator. If you need a bit of a hand to do this, you just do it using a multiplication method that you know. And you can see some of those in my other videos. Now we're going to look at how to do it with anything. This is where we use algebra. Most people hate algebra, don't worry. Algebra just represents any number. We can pick any letter. I'm going to pick the letter K, because that's one that doesn't get used very often. So K times K is just K squared. That's what it is. K times K times K times k times k, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, gives me k to the power 5. Nice and easy. But how does all this work together? Let's make it really, really simple. In maths, we often need to be logical in how we go about things. So I'm going to start in the middle with k to the power 0. Well, what is k to the power 0? Don't worry about that, we'll come to that in just a moment. Above it, I'm going to have k to the power 1, which we haven't done yet k to the power 2, which we know what it is. That is just k times k. And I'm going to have above here k to the power 3, which is k times k times k. And we could even put in k to the power 4, which is k times k times k times k. Nice and simple so far. So as the power increases by 1, we end up with another multiplied by k. As the power increases by another one, we have another multiplied by k. So that makes sense that as we go down, as the power decreases, we're getting rid of a multiplied by k. We get rid of a multiplied by k to get k squared, and we'll get rid of another multiplied by k to get k. 
So k to the power 1 is just k. Nice and simple. And that means anything to the power 1 is just itself. So 378 to the power 1 is just 378. Nice and easy. So to get rid of a multiply by k, what's the opposite of multiplying? The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So what we can say is that instead of multiplying by k to go up a line, we're actually dividing by k to go down a line. Which means we're dividing by a k to get to this one, we're dividing by k to get to this one, and we're dividing by a k again to get to this one. So in order to get from this line to this line, we need to divide by another k. k divided by k, well anything divided by itself is just 1. If I've got five things and I divide them between five people, each person gets one each. If I've got k number of things divided by k people, they each get one each. So k to the power of zero is one. And what that tells you is that any number to the power of zero is one. So if I've got 4,792 to the power of zero, that is always going to be one. No problems there. So let's go one step further. What is k to the power of minus one? Well, again, to go to another line down, we're going to divide by k, because the numbers 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1 is the next one. 1 divided by k can simply be written as 1 over k. 1 divided by k. And if we go down another one, k to the power minus 2, we need to divide by another k. To divide by another k, we're going to have 1 divided by k times k. And we realise that the k's are starting to multiply on the bottom of the fraction now. And that can actually be simplified to 1 over k squared, because k times k is just k squared. k to the power of minus 3 is 1 over k times k times k, which is just 1 over k to the power 3. And so on. And we can keep going down. In fact, if we want k to the power of minus 74, I'm not going to write it all out, it's going to take a long time, but that's just going to be 1 over k to the power of 74. Nice and simple. So now we understand that negative powers are just 1 over that number to the positive power. Quite simple. Now let's look at some examples of that. If I've got 7 to the power of minus 2, well that's just 1 over 7 squared. 7 squared is 7 times 7, which is 49. 1 over 49. There we are. If I've got 8 to the power of minus 3, well, that's just 1 over 8 to the power 3. And 8 to the power 3 is 512. And it goes on like that. If I've got 10 to the power of minus 7, that's just going to be 1 over 10 to the power of 7. And 10 to the power of 7 is 1 followed by 7 zeros, which is going to give me 10 million. Here are 20 questions for you to have a go yourself. For the first five, just write the number as a power. For questions 16 to 20, work out the actual value and leave your answer as a fraction if it becomes a fraction. I've used red for the question number and blue is the actual question. You should need a calculator for any of them. Some of them may require you to do a little bit of extra work. Give it a go, see how you do, and the answers will be in my next video.